So we have configured the clients in Auth0 for our Angular and Spring Boot REST API client applications. And let's go ahead and secure our Angular and Spring Boot applications with Auth0. So as I mentioned previously, we're not going to use Auth0 SDK to implement the Auth0 authentication mechanism in our Angular application, but we are going to use a generic Auth, Auth2 library called as Angular Auth OIDC client, where this is an NPM package where we can use it to implement the Auth2 code flow in our application. It also supports proof key code exchange uh, authorization code flow mechanism, which is the preferred way of performing OAuth 2 inside the single page applications and also was, and also for the mobile applications. This particular library is very easy to use. I found this is very easy to use and also provide some good best practices here. So let's use this library and install it in our Angular application. So make sure you are in the GitHub page for Angular Auth IDC and I'm just going to scroll down until I find. So by, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is this library is certified by OpenID Foundation. Whenever we are, you are using any library regarding OAuth 2, uh, just make sure that it is already is, that it is certified by OpenID Foundation, right? So I'm just going to continue scrolling down and uh, in the installation section, I'm just going to copy this ng add command and I'm going to open IntelliJ and I'm going to open a new terminal and go into the CD to the front end and YouTube clone UI folder and I'm just going to paste in the command which I just copied before right so this is going to add the angular auth OADC client based on the angular version which is installed on your machine right so it's asking me uh, that package angular auth OADC client 12.0.3 will be installed and executed I this is fine for me so I'm just going to type in y and uh, during the installation, it will ask what kind of auth flow we have to use. So if you have already, uh, if you have already referred to the video I have mentioned before, you can implement OAuth2 in different kinds of flows. Uh, one is authorization code flow, the normal authorization code flow, and the other is authorization code flow using proof of key code exchange, which is a more secure one when you are using single page applications like Angular or using mobile applications. When you, uh, or else if you are just using time leaf or like server side rendered app web applications, then you, you are safe to use also authorization code flow mechanism there, right? Uh, as we are using a single page application with Angular, I'm going to go with the Pixie, uh, PKC uh, authorization code flow, but I'm just going to scroll down and see if they already provide the authorization mechanism from Auth0. So it's already existing here. So I'm just going to select Auth0 and uh, it's asking us to enter the authority URL or uh, the tenant URL. So this I can, we can find it um, by opening our, by opening Auth0 and going to applications. And here the tenant ID, we can find first just going into the Angular client. The tenant ID is nothing but the domain. So I'm just going to copy the domain and paste in this information inside the terminal. So once this information is provided, this Angular Auth OIDC client is automatically going to add some modules and it's going to successfully complete the installation, right? So you can see that it's added a file, a config file, auth config module.ts file inside the folder auth. So let's see what it's, what for kind of file it has created. So I'm just going to open front end, YouTube clone UI, going to source app auth authconfig.module.ts. So I'm just going to quickly add this into my local git repository. So if you're wondering what shortcut I've used, it's control alt a and IntelliJ to add automatically add the file to your local git repository, right? So inside you can inside this file, you can see that it's just a class called authconfig module. Above this class, we have the ng module de decorator. So it's defined as a module and uh, inside this imports array, we are actually importing, we are defining the configuration for the auth module for the Angular Auth OIDC client auth module. So here we have uh, provided the authority URL uh, by as a domain, we have provided it in the while doing while performing the installation. So it, and after that, the redirect URL is going to be the present location of the browser. So from which URL you have started the flow, that's going to be the redirect URL and uh, the client ID. So we have to provide the 
so the for the client id field we have to provide the client id from all zero so we can find the client id by going into again to all zero portal and i'm just going to copy the client id from here and i'm going to paste in the client id so coming to the scope scope is nothing but if you want to provide some kind of uh, custom permissions you can add these inside the inside uh, the auth0 configuration and i can define these permissions here and uh, the response type is going to be code so we are going to be using authorization code flow mechanism here and uh, the silent renew is going to be true that means if a token is expired the library is going to renew these tokens automatically and we are also going to use refresh tokens to recycle the auth tokens right so this is the standard configuration mechanism which is generated by the angular auth oidc client all right so now let's go ahead and implement the login functionality in our angular application for that i'm just going to make use of the documentation in the angular auth oidc library so i'm just going to scroll down here until i find the section quick start and in the configuration we already completed the configuration part and in here it says that we have to call the check auth from our app component.ts file and the method check auth is needed to process the redirect from our security token service and set the correct states for the token and all so as this is a mandatory method uh, we have to call so this is going to check whether the authentication is uh, done or not so i'm just going to copy this which should be added so this block of code should be added inside the app component file so i'm just going to go ahead and open the app component.ts file and and i'm going to implement implement the on init interface and i'm going to now implement all the members so that's going to be ng on init method and inside the ng on init method i am going to paste in the code called as check auth oidc security check auth and of course this oidc security service is not yet injected into our app component so i'm just going to type in constructor create a new constructor and i'm going to auto and i'm going to inject the oidc security service here so oidc security service i'm going to create a variable and uh, oidc security service right so i'm going to select this class so now this class is injected into our app component and uh, inside the ng on edit we are calling the check auth method which will ch check that the authentication is functioning correctly or not and uh, while subscribing to this method call the observable which is returned from check auth we can use different kinds of responses um, the object is going to include different kinds of um, fields like the field which indicates that whether the user is on the authenticator or not we can also have the user data the access token and as well as the id token and in here we don't need all this data i'm just going to remove all the unnecessary object but i'm just going to keep the is authenticated boolean flag and inside the subscribe i'm just going to log out whether the app is authenticated or not i'm just going to pass in the is authenticated flag to the console console log console log statement right now we can go ahead and implement the login so first of all we have to show the log login button to the right side of the header component so if you open the header component html file we have the youtube clone title and we have a button where we can upload the video and also a button where we are showing the user information right so instead of showing the user information if the if the user is on is not authenticated we have to show a button called as login so i'm just going to create a new button called as matrace button and i am going to provide the text as login for this button so this button should be displayed whenever the user is not authenticated so the next question is how do we know whether the user is authenticated or not right so for that we can make make use of the oidc security service again i'm going to again inject the oidc service security uh, oidc security service inside the header component also so just type in oidc 
security service and type in Hawaii DC security service and inside the ng on edit method I'm going to type in this dot Hawaii DC security service dot is authenticated right so this is authenticated is going to return us an observable so I'm going to now subscribe to this observable and uh, again this is going to return an object and we are going to make use of this boolean variable and we are going to expose this boolean variable to on the class level on the header component class level right so how can we do that by first creating a boolean variable called is authenticated which is boolean which is going to be false by default right and uh, inside the subscribe call i'm just going to type in this dot is authenticated is equals is authenticated so whenever so while loading the header component if the oidc security service is returning true then this is authenticated boolean flag will also be set true and then based on this flag we can show or hide this login button right so if the user is authenticated, then we have to show this account circle button that or else we have to show the login button, right? So for that, I can just use make use of the ng if ng if is authenticated, then we have to show this account circle else we can display the login button. For that, I'm just going to create a placeholder called as no auth, right? And I'm going to find the template called as ng template. And call this ng template as north right and I'm going to now embed this button inside the ng template right so again let's recap what we are doing first of all while loading the header component we are going to check OIDC security service if the user is authenticated or not and based on the result which is returned we are assigning this value to the flag is authenticated and based on this flag if the user is authenticated we are displaying the account circle that means that the user is logged in or else we are going to refer to a template with the placeholder name called as no auth which contains the login button right so now let's go ahead and test if this is working or not so i'm just going to open the application and just to make sure i'm just going to restart the application so once the application is restarted, I'm going to open YouTube clone UI and just to make sure I'm also going to open the console so that it will throw any errors. So I'm just going to refresh. Okay, so looks like we have an error. So it's trying to get the well-known endpoints from local host 4200 and the domain, right? So it's appending the domain to our uh, local host 4200 URL. So something is wrong. Let's see. I'm going to open the auth config module.ts file and here instead of providing the complete URL we have just provided the, the domain name so I'm just going to type in https programmingtiki.eu.auth0.com so now I think hopefully it should work all right so you can see that the app is now reloaded automatically and the app is authenticated as set to false because of course we did we did not kickstart the authentication workflow yet when you click on login nothing happens because we did not create any trigger to start the login workflow when we click on the login button so let's do that now i'm going to open intellij and go to the header component.html file and whenever this button is clicked the login button is clicked so for that i'm going to type in the click directive and we are going to call a method called as login so I'm just going to let's create this method login inside the header component.ts file and uh, starting off the login is pretty easy. I'm just going to also consult the documentation just to show that we are correct. So if you want to start off login, it's just as easy as calling the authorize method. So I'm just going to copy this and paste this inside the login method. So whenever the user clicks on the login button, we will call the OIDC security service authorize method, which will kick off the login workflow in auth0. And also similarly, we can create a method called as logoff and use another method from OIDC security service called as 
log of or we can also use another method called log of and revoke tokens which is what we want right we are also we just won't want to log off and uh, clear the tokens from our browser but also we want to revoke those tokens so that it's not used anymore so for now we have implemented the methods which are required for login so let, let's go back to the browser to clone ui and click on the login button i'm going to close the console and now you can see that it is redirected to the angular to the auth0 login page this is the login page which is visible by default you can observe that it's showing the application name which is youtube clone angular client and here we have the options to log in with google or you can also create your own account so i'm just going to go ahead with sign in with google option i'm going to accept here in the consent screen and now you can see the account circle button instead of the login button that means the user is logged in and authenticated successfully so if you open the console again now in the app component.ts the app is authenticated the variable is authenticated is set to true and now what's so the next step we have to do is we have to enable our spring boot backend also with auth2 capabilities so let's do that next